This section is, is usually pretty simple for people to grasp, so it'd be nice to end off with something that's um, pretty straightforward. It's rolling motion. So I'd like to start off with doing a video, uh, one of our demonstration videos. I'm going to demonstrate rolling motion of this ring. As a ring rolls along a surface without slipping, it travels a distance equal to the circumference of the circle each time the, the rotation completes one complete rotation. So for this, uh, this time when I roll the wheel, I want you to notice that between here and here, the wheel or the circle completes one rotation. So I've marked a black line here. The black line came up, came to the top, came down to the bottom again. So we've completed one rotation. The amount of time it takes for one complete rotation is called the period T. The distance traveled is equal to the circumference of the circle. How so? It's because as I roll without slipping at all, I'm not I'm talking about not slipping this way, but just rolling without slipping. I'm going to lay down the entire distance around the circle horizontally as I complete the circle. So that distance is the circumference of the circle, and that's 2 pi times the radius of the circle. So the distance that I've gone is 2 pi times the radius, that's the circumference, divided by the time. That's what we mean by velocity distance divided by time. But 2 pi divided by the period t is defined as the angular speed omega. And so this uh, equation v equals omega r gives the speed of a wheel or any circular object that rolls without slipping. Here's a, a capture of, of this result as a concept. Derive the speed of the center of mass of a, a round object as it rolls at constant speed without slipping along a flat surface. So this is the speed that we're looking for. And V, speed of the center of mass. So what we're talking about here is the speed of that axle for the wheel related to the angular speed that it's turning at. And what we did in the demo videos, we, we showed that the, the speed has to be the distance traveled, and that distance traveled was the circumference of the circle, divided by the time, which is called the period of um, motion, the period of um, the time com required for one complete revolution. And, and then we argued that omega is 2 pi over the period. Now, I'm actually going to skip down into this concept and then finish this one up here. Relate the angular velocity to the period of rotation at constant angular velocity. So, if the instantaneous angular velocity is equal to the average angular velocity. That means that the angular velocity isn't changing with time. It's rotating at the same speed as a function of time. Well, the average angular velocity is the angle through which you rotate divided by the elapsed time. But if you rotate through a complete circle, then the angle that you're going to rotate through measured in radians is 2 pi because one complete circle is 2 pi radians. So the angular displacement is 2 pi radians, and the time it takes to rotate through a circle is the period t. And that relates us back to chapter 5. This, um, we talked about the, uh, the period of rotation. This concept now, that omega is 2 pi over t, that can go 
into here. So this 2 pi over t that appears here can be replaced by omega, and this is v equals r omega. So this is a relationship between the speed of the center of mass of the axle, the center of the circle as it moves along, the radius of the circle, and the angular speed of the circle if it's rolling without slipping. Now, if you took a circle and just rotated it and then skidded along the, the, the ground and, and let it slip along the ground, then its, its velocity of the center of mass, or the velocity of the axle, is going to be zero. But if it's rolling without slipping, then it, it, uh, it obeys this relationship. The other interesting thing about this one is that this looks just like our relationship for the tangential speed. Which says that the speed of the outer rim of a circle of radius r is equal to the speed of the center of mass of that circle as it rolls without slipping. Pretty cool. It has to be.